Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Firebrick Company. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to apply the perlite render that makes up the outer shell of your pre-cut brick oven kit. Okay, so we're now ready to do the perlite render over the chicken wire and the ceramic fiber blanket. Now, so the perlite render layer is basically there to give you a protective shell over the ceramic fiber blanket layer. Uh, and it's also giving you additional insulation over the oven. Uh, but remember, the predominant insulation is the ceramic fiber blanket. That's an incredible insulator. That's doing most of the insulating work. Uh, but your perlite render does help as well. We really recommend that you tile around your oven before you do the render, uh, or at least before you build up to your full thickness of render. The reason for that is uh, if you're going to tile around this surface, which most people do, um, if you've already done your full render, then you have to cut those tiles to follow the exact profile of the dome. Whereas if you cut your tiles first and you lay them, you can actually tuck them in against the ceramic fiber blanket and then render down over the top of them. So you can actually cut the tiles quite roughly uh, and no one's ever gonna know. Uh, they'll just be sitting nicely under the render and the render will come down onto those tiles and make it look like the tiles are cut perfectly. Uh, so that's our first suggestion. Now, if you are uh, in a real rush and for some reason you don't have time to tile the stand first before you do the render, then there is a trick that you can use to, to get away with that. What you can do is actually cut some plywood uh, to follow the profile of the ceramic fiber blanket. Uh, make sure you're using something that's thick enough to allow for the tile and the adhesive underneath. I'm gonna be using a 10 mil tile, which is about five mil of render, so I need about 15 mil. Uh, so I've actually gone ahead and used our form ply uh, from the form work that came with the oven. So I've actually repurposed that to uh, render down onto. So I can allow that to set, I can render down onto that surface, allow it to set, and then remove it later on and slide my tiles in underneath it. Uh, so that's just a, a tip for, if you do find yourself in that situation where for some reason you really need to do the dome render first, and you wanna come back and do the tiling later, uh, that's the kind of thing that does make your life a lot easier when it comes to doing that tiling later on. Uh, so to do the perlite render, you're gonna need a few things. You'll need a, like a wheelbarrow, or maybe a few uh, large plastic tubs. Uh, you're gonna need all your render materials, which you'll find the list for in the written instructions. We give you full breakdown of how it's mixed, uh, what you're gonna mix the perlite with, and the ratios that you're gonna use. Uh, and then you also need some tools, of course. Uh, so you'll want your polystyrene float. So this is a specially shaped piece of polystyrene uh, with a curve cut into one side of it, which is to help you get the shape of the render on the dome. We put float on the back because a lot of people keep mistaking it as packaging. It's not packaging guys, please don't throw it away. All right, uh, you're also gonna want uh, your gloves. Um, now because I am having to work over the dome because we're working into a corner, I'm gonna be wearing my, um, my, my green long sleeve gloves to protect my arms from the blanket because I will have to sort of reach over it and I don't wanna end up all scratchy at the end of the day. I'm going to be wearing my mask still because we're working with the blanket. Uh, it's still not um, uh, sort of protected yet. Uh, and so because we, we're going to be working over it, I'm going to be wearing my mask to prevent inhaling any of those fibers. Uh, and then of course my safety glasses, uh, some kind of trowel or float, just something to, that you can pick up the render out of the tub and get it on uh, with the process for applying the render to the dome, you have two options. The first option, which is the conservative way of doing it, is to build up the render over several coats, all right? So the first coat would just be a scratch coat. Uh, it's called, basically, you just work the render into the chicken wire using your hands, obviously wearing gloves. Um, what, do, do an initial layer over the chicken wire just to seal in the blanket and give you your, your first layer. 
Then your second layer, you're aiming to build up around a half inch or a little bit more uh, in each layer, about 15 mil or so. Uh, you build up another layer over the previous layer once the first layer has set, which usually takes about 12 hours. Okay, so you, once a day, you could come back and do another coat of render and build up your full thickness over several days. We, we usually recommend about 50 millimeters of perlite render. You can do a little less, you can do a little more if you want. There is excess perlite in your kit. Uh, we, we make sure that you have plenty of perlite in your kit so you're not gonna run out. The other option, and this only applies if you've had experience with render. Uh, we, we're finding we're getting a lot of professional landscapers, stonemasons, bricklayers, building our ovens for clients and for themselves. And a few of them said, oh, do, do I have to do it in layers? Technically, you don't. You can build it up in one thick layer. However, you need, you need to mix it with a mixing drill if you're going to do that, because you need to mix it very thick and very sticky. Uh, and I really don't recommend it to anyone who's not 100% confident that they can do that, that they can build up the full 50 mil in one go. The reason I say that is when I built my very first oven, I thought, yeah, I'll just go for it. I'll, you know, it's, how hard can it be? I'll just uh, render, you know, 50 mil in, in one go. And I mixed, my, my perlite render mix was a little bit wet and I'd be putting it on and it was wanting to just slump off. Uh, because it was so thick and sort of heavy and it wasn't the right consistency and it was just falling off and I nearly I was nearly in tears I have so, I was so frustrated uh, so I really recommend if you're not a pro go with the this you know the conservative method take your time and just enjoy it um, rather than trying to you know um, do it all in one hit okay uh, so yeah, that's, that's the, the two options, um, but I really just want to re-emphasize, unless you're super confident and you've, you've done rendering before, just go with the conservative method and build it up over a few layers. Uh, some other things I want to talk about, temperature gauges. So you'll see we put our thermo well back in. Uh, so I just put a rod through from the inside because you may have noticed we covered it up with blanket and, oh, where, where does it go? And so I just put a sharp rod through from the inside, which created a hole for me. So that told me where it was, and then I, I put it back in. Um, and I've just used a little bit of masking tape just to seal that hole so that nothing falls in there while I'm rendering, because it would be kind of difficult because of the angle that it's on, a little difficult to get it out again. Uh, now, if you're not using a thermo well, if you're just using the gauge, which is absolutely fine, uh, this is what we recommend doing. So I've wrapped the head of the gauge in Glad Wrap and just use a little bit of masking tape around the back of it just to hold it all together. Uh, I would take this, I would actually grease the stem and a little bit of grease around here isn't going to hurt either. And then I'll put that in, snug it into the point that you want it and then bring the render in around it. And remember you can always, if you, you could of course as well, put some render on and then push the gauge into that and sort of um, uh, wiggle it into that so you get a nice um, uh, you know, pocket left behind. Because once it's all set, uh, you can remove the gauge and uh, it won't bond because nothing will stick to the, the glad wrap. Uh, you can remove that, take your glad wrap off and then you can put it back in and it'll just fit nicely back into that void. We're going to make a start at the back. Uh, now, if you're building into a corner, uh, firstly, well done uh, for getting this far. It is a challenge when you're building it into a corner. Uh, it is a challenge worthy of the mightiest DIYer. Uh, so getting into that corner is a little bit of fun. I'm going to do that first. But remember, no one's ever going to see that. Like, people aren't going to crawl over the top of your oven to see kind of what kind of job you did on the render at the back. And if your friends do that, they're not good friends. Right, get some new friends. Uh, so I'm going to start at the back and I'm not really too fussed about the finish that I get on the back. What I'm really concerned with is what you guys are going to see. I want to put real effort in to, uh, to, to the render that 
is going to be visible. So if you're working on a stand that you can get all the way around, hey, makes it so much easier. Um, but fear not, there are ways of, of getting everything done. The other thing you're probably thinking of is how on earth is he going to render the bit near the wall, right? Uh, and I've got a little trick for you to show you that. Guys, what I want you to aim to do uh, is when the render comes down behind the precast flue gallery, just build up a little lip behind the gallery so that when water runs down here, instead of running straight into the intersection, that valley between the flue gallery and the render, we create a little valley that the water will collect in and then it'll run down and run off rather than running in behind the flue gallery because we tend to get a tiny crack there between the two surfaces uh, even even with acrylic render coating those we sometimes find a little crack forming there so just create a little valley here you can do it later you don't even have to do it at this point you could do your render bring it down hard and create that hard valley and then come back later with a another material another render for example and just create that sort of rounded edge along there so that the, you take the, that harsh edge out of the valley and you create more of a, a little swale. Some other tips around rendering the oven. Regardless of which method you're using, the conservative method or the super fast, crazy professional method, uh, what I really recommend is allowing, particularly for that last layer, so your final layer over the dome, where you're trying to get that really nice round shape. Use your, your float, it's made to follow the, you know, the curve of the dome, but wait, don't try and get, get it perfect while the render is really wet uh, and, and, and not sloppy, but if you're trying to shape the render while it's still really wet, you'll just end up moving it around everywhere. It's actually very similar to trying to trowel concrete while it's wet. If you're trying to get a nice flat surface on concrete, you screed it flat, then you leave it for a little while until it starts to set and it just starts to turn. It starts to get a little firmer. Then you can get a trowel and you can go over that surface and it won't just make a mess of it. It will give you a nice smooth finish. It's the same thing with rendering the dome. You put the render on and if you're trying to shape it while it's wet, it's a real pain, but if you let it just start to set just that little bit, and it's all about timing, so just waiting around, uh, being ready for, for when it starts to turn, you can just come back and like this, this is still a little wetter than I'd like. There's some areas that have started to firm up, particularly up top, and I can just get this and go over it. And you can see it's not digging into the surface anymore. It's just floating over the top. And that's when the float really comes into its own because that's the point 
that you can easily see, oh, I've got a little divot there, I've got a little dent. Great, I can fill that in. Just get a little bit of wet material and throw it on there. And you can work that in and even out that little unevenness. Um, so yeah, that's, that's another suggestion is um, just timing. Don't try and get the shape perfect while it's wet. Wait until it just starts to turn and you get your float out. And just little circular motions and it'll help you get a nice round shape on your dome. Now, once you've got the shape that you want and you, you know, you've sort of finished, finished up with uh, the dome render, do a nice big clean. Uh, I would wait until the render's almost set so that you don't sort of, um, mess with it as you're sponging off your brickwork, but get yourself a wet sponge and you know, dry towel and just clean up all of your brickwork and your precast blue gallery uh, and maybe, oh, I don't know, the wall uh, that you rendered near. Clean all that up while you have the opportunity. Another thing actually, while I think of it, if I could go back and do this again, I would leave the plastic film that I had on the walls uh, that I, for when I was pouring the concrete slab, I would actually leave that there for the duration of the build. Uh, then you're not gonna end up with this kind of thing. Now that'll all come off, I can, I can scrub all that off. It's gonna be a bit of an effort and I might need to repaint it. But if you have the opportunity, if you're, if you're building near a wall that you particularly like and don't wanna to have to clean it later on, good idea to cover it with plastic while you're building. So our perlite's actually been drying now for uh, a week. It's been curing, which is great. And you recall, we were talking about creating a valley in between the back of the flue gallery and the dome. Because imagine we're outside, you know, rain's hosing down and the water that, uh, the, that rainwater is gonna run down the dome and then come down here. And if we don't have some kind of little valley here, then the, the water's gonna to wanna to try and work its way in between the, uh, the flue gallery and the render. I've seen people do all kinds of different things. I've seen people run high temp silicon around the back here, a whole range of, uh, of different things. What we tried to do is actually create that valley using our perlite render. But let's be honest, perlite render's not the easiest stuff to work with. It's sort of, uh, it's a bit like sort of oatmeal. It's, it doesn't, um, doesn't spread very well. It's a bit hard to control for doing this sort of little finicky work. Uh, so what you could use is other render. So say you're rendering your stand, you might have some left over. Uh, you can use that to go in here. Uh, I've already got a little bit of a valley going there, but I could use some just to improve that valley uh, and and you know create the that little dip that I'm after and I can chase that all the way around, which is what I'm gonna do now. Be aware, the flue gallery back here, it might get to maybe 200 degrees Celsius. It's quite well insulated, this point back here. So uh, I'm not really too concerned about how the render is, is gonna, it'll, it'll handle that quite well. Um, and that'll give us that, that, just that little gutter to run the water off.